You might be like me and just finished breeding your first competitive team in Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet, or a batch of Pokemon may da take down the toughest raids. But what's next? EV training, that's what. Some trainers might be jumping into building a team for the first time or use rental codes throughout Sword and Shield's lifespan. Or maybe always used one method I talk about in EV training, or they used other methods that aren't official. Either way, today I'm going to give you a guide on how I plan to EV train my Pokemon, and hopefully this guide helps you out. So this might get long, let's get started. First off, what is an EV? An EV is short for effort value. These are extra points added to a Pokemon's base stat that can power up the stats on said Pokemon. These are where team building can get creative and battle calcs are won or lost. Each time you battle a Pokemon, wild or owned by a trainer outside of competitive online battles, that Pokemon species has a set amount of EV points that your team will earn in a particular stat. This is usually between one to three EV points that your team will earn based around what stage evolution it is. Usually, this is the highest stat, base stat of that Pokemon species. There sometimes can be different points going to two different stats in other Pokemon, but we'll talk about that later. All you need to know is if you want your Pokemon to be fully ready for the online battles or to hit as hard as they can in raids, you're going to have to EV your Pokemon. EVs for Pokemon max out at 210 additional points, but are only 508 of those are going to give you extra points towards that actual stat. Each stat can go as high as 252, and at level 50, the level all competitive Pokemon takes place at, the first stat point is just 4 EVs, but move up to 8 in that stat after the first one. This results in an extra 32 points and a stat with maximum EVs. It is important to note that if you invest EVs in a stat that's boosted by nature, you get a little bit extra. We call this the bumps in EV training or team building, yielding 35 extra points instead of the 32 I mentioned before if you maximize that EV stat of a beneficial nature. There are two methods, the fast way that will cost you some items and in-game money, and there is one that takes more time but costs less and can be free if you're willing to spend the time to do so. Let's talk about the fast one first. Vitamins and feathers. In this section, we'll talk about vitamins and feathers together because you'll need both of these to fine-tune the exact EV spreads. Vitamins yourself only get you EVs to multiples of 10. Vitamins are single use items that can increase your EV stat by 10, like I said before. These have different vitamins for each different stat. HP up increases HP, protein increases attack, iron increases defense, calcium increases special attack, zinc increases special defense, and carbos increases speed. These items can easily be purchased in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet at these towns at the Chansey Supply Shop, each one costing 10,000 Poke Dollars. So if you're just going to do a simple 252, 252, and 4 spread, you would need 53 vitamins to do so, this costing you 530,000 Poke Dollars. Doing this for a full team of six would cost you 380,000 poke dollars and could be more if you need different amounts and different stats now if you're using vitamins and not maxing out each stat you'll need feathers to get those precise ev spreads because like i said before vitamins only work in tens feathers are found around in game and cannot be bought each feather gives you one EV point in that respective stat. So if you want 52 EVs and one stat, you would need five vitamins and two feathers. Feathers are the health wing for HP, the muscle wing for attack, the resist wing for defense, the genius wing for special attack, the clever wing for special defense, and the swift wing for speed. There is also a pretty wing 
They don't grant you any EVs, but can be sold and go to your vitamin fund. These feathers can be found by beating raids. Usually you get a few in the same stat that the Pokemon in the raid would give you EVs for. They can also be found around large bodies of water as items that are on the ground. This would be Castle Royale Lake and Porto Mardinia. My suggestion is that when you're going around grinding raids, you might as well pick up as many as you can. Now that we've talked about the quick, let's talk about the old fashioned way, battling. Like I said earlier in the video, each time you battle a Pokemon, that Pokemon species has a set amount of EV points that your team will earn for a particular stat. This could take a while because most Pokemon I'm going to tell you about give you only one EV point, meaning that you would have to knock out 252 of one type of Pokemon to max out a stat. But you don't have to do that because there are some items that will make it easier. These items are called power items. There is one for each stat. These power items when held by a Pokemon will give you an additional eight EVs in its respective stat, making one EV Pokemon worth nine EVs and two EV Pokemon worth 10. This takes the number of Pokemon knockouts you need in one stat, stat down to 28 if you're only doing one EV value Pokemon. These items can be bought at Deli Burt Presents in these cities for 10,000 Poké Dollars each. The Power Weight, the green one, for HP. The Power Bracer, the red one, for attack. The Power Belt, the orange one, for defense. The Power Lens, the purple one, for special attack. The Power Band, yellow, for special defense. And the Power Anklet, blue, for speed. You can buy multiple of each power item to help raise more than one Pokemon at a time. But now, let's get to the Pokemon that you will need to go after. Now this list of Pokemon was started by my buddy Chris. He joined my stream and gave me advice on XP grinding and helped me get through the story a lot quicker so we could do 5 and 6 star raids together. So thanks Chris. I did add some of my own as well to make the process go faster possibly. For attack, you need to go east of Mezagoza to the rocky area to fight Shinx for 1 EV point, 9 if you're using the Power Bracer. You can increase Shinx spawn rate with the Avocado Sandwich with Avocado, Smoked Filet, and Salt. You could also go after Low Kicks, they're worth 2 EVs in attacks, and they're just about everywhere in higher level areas. You'll find them all around Paldea. For defense, at Castle Royal Lake, you can find Bergmite for 1 EV, Avalug for 2 EVs, and Slowbro for 2 EVs in defense. I don't have a sandwich for this, but I would say anything that increases ice type encounters will work for the Bergmite and Avalug. For special attack, go after Smallloaf and Mareep for 1 EV each in the fields outside of Cortondo. These are very common. You will not need a sandwich for these. If you run out of spawns, just fly back to a Pokemon Center and head back to the fields to get more spawns. After you finish the storylines, you can head down to Area Zero and find Golduck and Glamora. They're common down there and will give you two EVs each in special attack as well. For special defense, you can head back to the grounds in Castle Royal Lake and find Swablu and Gumi for 1 EV, or Altaria and Sligu for 2 EVs. The egg sandwich using egg, cucumber, salt, and mayonnaise will increase their spawns. For speed, you can find Palmy and Rookity east of Mezagoza in the same area you farmed Shinx. These both give you 1 EV each. You can use the same avocado sandwich to increase Palmy's spawn rates in this area as well. Raichu can be found down in area 0, giving you 3 EVs per knockout. The next thing I want to talk about is Paradox Mons. Now, if you want to get the most EV yields, in some cases Paradox Mons down in area 0 can give you a lot of EVs quickly. And Pokemon Scarlet, Great Tusk, Brute Bonnet, Slitherwing, and Roaring Moon all give you 3 attack EVs. That comes out to 11 attack EVs if you are using the band. Sandy Shock and Scarlet gives you 3 special attack, and Screaming Tail gives you 3 HP. And Pokemon Violet, Iron Hand, 
Iron Thorns, and Iron Valiant will give you 3 attack EVs each. Iron Treads will give you 3 defense, Iron Moth and Iron Jugulus will give you 3 special attack EVs, and Iron Bundle will give you 3 speed EVs. Now, remember how I said Pokemon give different points and different stats? Fluttermane is the best example, giving 1 special attack, 1 special defense, and 1 speed, which can really throw off your EV training. So, if you're down in area 0 EV training, Fluttermane is one you want to avoid. Now, if you're paying attention, you'll notice that I've skipped a stat. HP. And I did that for a reason. For HP, you can go back to Castle Royal Lake and go after Slowpoke and Azuril for 1 EV each, or Meryl for 2 EVs where a zesty, zesty sandwich will help you out. This sandwich needs jalapeno, onion, herb sausage, and chili sauce. Or, if you, save for the, if you save those HP EVs for last, you can do them and also finish leveling up your Pokemon. At the very far north of the map, outside of the fairy type Team Star base, you're going to go to the area where the Wild Terra Sylveon spawns. There, you're going to make a ham sandwich using pickle, ham, mayonnaise, and mustard. When you do this, for the next 30 minutes, Chansey will spawn at higher rates. Chansey gives you 2 EVs and HP and a whole lot of XP, giving you the chance to finish off your EV training and level up these mons to get them VGC ready. Remember, if you want to hyper train a Pokemon, like if you got a shiny, or if you have an Paradox Mon that you need to level up. They need to be at at least level 50. Paradox Mons are probably already at level 50. Never mind the Paradox Mon example. This is probably, either way, the best way to XP grind and get HP EVs at the same time. Now that you're done EV training, double check your spreads and make sure you did them just the way you wanted. Did you mess up? It's okay. It happens, and Pokemon have a way to reset EVs to make adjustments to competitive mons or fix mistakes. These are berries made to decrease EV stats by 10. Think of them as reverse vitamins. These also increase a Pokemon's happiness. They can be found as raid rewards, but also on the ground throughout the world, so make sure you're always picking up those shiny items on the ground. Ooh, shiny. The berries go as following. The Pomeg Berry is for HP. The Kelpsy Berry is for attack, the Qualot Berry is for defense, Hondu Berry for special attack, Greep Berry for special defense, and Tomato Berry for speed. I would use an IV checker, probably Pokemon Showdown, put your Pokemon's level, put its stats in the thing, and find out what IVs it has to figure out how many you need to take away and how to fix it. But if you mess it up, Good luck with that, because it's a pain in the butt, especially if you don't realize it until after that Pokemon is maxed out. Now, you're ready to EV train Pokemon and get the most out of them. Now that we're at the end, is there anything I missed? Let me know in the comments down below. This video took a decently long time to, to record and edit and get the B-roll, and if this helped you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know if there's any questions in the comments below or any suggestions for another video. If you made it this far in the video, I want to say thanks for watching. Thanks for anyone who helped contribute to this video. And until next time, I'm Zach, and we'll see everyone later.